who am I and what do I do? Yeah. Um, okay. I'm a, a former professional poker player. Um, now, uh, indeed since 2004, 2005, a full-time corporate speaker and trainer. I guess some would say that I'm now doing sort of what I was probably always destined to do, given that I started my working life as an actor. That's more than 20 years ago now. Um, I was in the very first two series of Geordie Teen Soap Biker Grove. And yes, before you ask, uh, I do know Anton Deck. They were in the, the first two series with me. And this was a real baptism of fire, really, in the media world. Uh, bearing in mind, I was I was 16, and you know I couldn't leave my front door sometimes without being without being mobbed. I decided that really what I wanted to do was was uh, this guy's job was was be behind the camera, and what I wanted to do was uh, ideally direct feature films. So I knew that one tried and tested route into that position was uh, to sort of go via Oxbridge um, and at the age of 18 I got a place at Cambridge to read economics um, which I later changed to anthropology <laughs> largely because economics plus theatre equaled nervous breakdown and then my big break came when I had my first screenplay commissioned by Film 4 um, and that happened whilst I was still at university and I was actually doing my rewrites at the same time as doing my finals and and yes, yes, I got a very, I got a very average degree as a result. So uh, by the age of 24, I'd written films for Film 4 and Columbia TriStar and Miramax, and directed a number of award-winning short films and TV commercials. And like you know, from the outside, you would have said, uh, "Oh, you know, his life seems to be going rather well." But um, for me personally, I just wasn't happy doing what I was doing. I was becoming increasingly unhappy uh, in my work. Um, and the reasons for this are very long and boring, but essentially I just wasn't making the films that I wanted to make, I wasn't working with the people that I wanted to work with. And uh, by the age of 25 I realised that something was going to have to change. So after nine pretty hard soul-searching months I made the decision to move to Las Vegas and become a professional poker player. We've all done it, haven't we? Hey. So yeah, I lived and worked in Las Vegas for three years, off and on, with a few uh, brief spells in the UK. Um, I learned a lot about life. I think it was the sort of period that made me a man, if you like. Um, but most of what I learned about is what I feature in my seminars and presentations. It's, it's decision making. Because bear in mind that a poker player has to make a decision every 90 seconds or so. All right, so that's one which you can't procrastinate, you can't abdicate, you can't delegate. Um, and so it was during this time that I became fascinated by that area, you know, decision making. Um, and it was a meeting point, actually, I remember, of, of, of psychology and economics, both of which I've been really fascinated by uh, in my youth. So for me, I mean, given that I only thought I'd play poker for, I don't know, six months, maybe a year, it was as much a surprise to me as anyone that I ended up doing it for nearly three years before coming back to the UK for good this time. And uh, I knew that I wanted to embrace risk-taking uh, at some point in my life in business and for that reason I set up my own video production company in, uh, in my native Newcastle upon Tyne. Did you enjoy doing that? Did I enjoy it? Uh, well I'd always wanted to run my own company uh, and so whilst it was challenging uh, we had a fair degree of success. Um, we ended up selling the company in the end to Bob Geldof's media giant Ten Alps and um, the main thing for me was it was whilst I was running this company that I was asked for the first time to, to, to give that talk about the relationship between um, poker and business. And every talk that I gave uh, seemed to lead to another one. Someone in the audience would ask me to do it for their business. And eventually I just got to the point where I thought, hang on, you know, this should sort of be my job. This should be my career. So in 2005, I, uh, I joined a training company because I sort of thought that I needed to learn how to do this properly. I joined a company called The Mind Gym, who were absolutely brilliant, and for whom I delivered, I think, nearly 400 sessions uh, for all manner of just brilliant blue-chip clients, Virgin, The Guardian, uh, ABN AMRO, just fantastic people. And uh, more than anything else, actually, during that period of time, I learned not to speak, although I did learn a lot about speaking, but actually about training, about facilitating, which is much more about listening. And then, end of 2007, I decided to sort of go it alone. I'd already been doing my own speeches about poker, um, and ever since that period of time, that's been my sole source of income. And in total, I've now delivered over a 1,000 sessions for over 150 clients around the world.